We are now at the quarter mark of the NFL season, and with <clears throat> with all this time spent uh, watching the games, like doing our research, just trying to get a good grasp on how exactly the league is going right now, I think we've come to the conclusion that we are no closer to figuring out any of this shit than we were when we started the season. This season is absolutely on crack. Hello, everyone. I'm Nikki of the Haymakers. That's Voice of Reason. That's Leah the Squirrel. <sighs> Guys, we uh, we were mid last week. Bull crap. We were, we were awful. I mean, I will. By, the, de I will by the definition of the word, we were mid. Like we we got exactly half of them, except for you, who was under five hundred. I I will I will state a few things. Mm -hmm. We were nearly all right on the Steelers if that punt if that fumble wasn't gotten by uh, by Dak. <coughs> by the way, that that. that I'm going to be talking about that game later in my uh -huh. winners and losers. Okay. Um, like there, there was a chunk of games where it came down to bullshit. Uh huh. I mean, like uh, there, there, there's been plenty of that this year. I, I, I'm, I'm. If it keeps up, I'm going to be dubbing this year the year of bullshit finishes. <laughs> that is fair. Yep. All right, yeah. So Here's the thing, though, m most of the time it isn't ref ball. It's just, oh god, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's oh god, I can't look. Yeah, it's like, oh, it's down to a field goal. I, you know, I'm gonna close my eyes and look away and hope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh. Anyway, so yeah. So this is our current records. Uh, coins still kicking our butts, but just by two games, forty-seven and thirty-one. Mm -hmm. I'm forty-five and thirty-three. Nikki is 41 and 35, and Leah, sorry, still under 500. You are 37 and 41. I'm climbing back. <laughs> we'll see. Not really. You went 500. You were exactly the same place you were last which, week. Which means I'm not getting worse. <laughs> Yay? But anyway, let's go on to what are the losers for week five. Um, uh, as, I, as I said, I, I already know what I'm going with, so... Alrighty. And I've already teased what I'm going for, either my winner or loser. But for my loser, I'm going with the whole game of the Cowboys and Steelers because rain delay. Yeah. So this. Yeah. So the so the game was delayed by an hour. Uh, and yes. If, <laughs> and I just want to also point out, Dak Prescott fell through an interception uh, in one game in two different days. I think he's yes. the first person to ever do that. <laughs> Which is really weird. This entire season is weird. Yeah. Um, also, the game was massively boring up until, like, the last minute. It was the it was a game perfect for these two franchises. I, I feel sorry for the people who... Because... You, you three put it best. There were Yinzes in the stands... As it thundered, light as thunder, lightning, and rain was pouring, pouring, and some of them were shirtless. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I did, I did see. I did see the one guy who was like it, like on the in the poncho, like pouring rain as it like got got into his beer or something. Yeah, he's drinking a beer as it's pouring rain, and his beer is slowly becoming more and more weak. <laughs> I mean, it can't get any more weak than Bud Light. Eh, true. Ooh. Oh wait, no. Yes, a can Keystone. I've, yeah. ha I've had Keystone. That is that is piss water. <laughs> and now, as for my winner, Caleb Williams. He had a good game. Congratulations. He's been having some good games. Like like the Bears are like we have a good quarterback. Uh, I I said this earlier on. He just needs to get his feet underneath him and like mm -hmm. like. The first couple weeks, it, it's it's nerves you're playing in the NFL. And then he faced a really good defense. And now that he's facing teams that are kind of like on the Bears levels, he's getting his confidence. He's getting into his groove. And that's what you want for a rookie quarterback. Yeah, like, like 
he is he has gotten better passer rating numbers in every game so far this season. Like hmm. he threw for three hundred. Yeah. All right. Uh, sure, it was against the Panthers, but <laughs> anyway, Nikki, your winners and losers. Yeah, we take those. Yep, we take those. All right. So my winner for the week is Jaden Daniels. Woo. Like, Yay. at what at what point do we start talk? At what point do we start talking about this guy in MVP discussions? Because he's getting there. I think I mentioned him last week, possibly going like, into the uh, the MVP category. Like. Like, it is crazy how quickly this Commander's team has turned around. Like, I, I, I would was, I would not have guessed. I, I was saying this before we started the recording to voice. I can't believe that they are 4-1 and one and in the top four of the entire league. Yeah, they, they're winning the They're winning the NFC East right now. Mm. Like, shit's crazy. Like at this point, I think he's it, it's his at least rookie of the year award to lose. But like yeah. if 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 nobody else really like jumps out and uh deter like sets themselves apart from the pack, like Jaden could like sneakily come up and just win it, which would be insane. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I would say he's got the same chance that Stroud had last year. Same. All right. Any loser for the week? Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I dogpile on them a lot, but man, the Browns keep finding new lows. <laughs> like, I know, like, first off, they got fucking demolished by a rookie. Yeah. And, like, it, it genuinely looks like Deshaun Watson is, like, like given up like he like to quotes apparently like i'm looking at the uh the recap of the game and Stephen a smith basically said that and damn it takes a lot for me to agree with Stephen a but i think he's right deshaun is just like such a non non-interested factor like you watch those games and he looks like he'd rather be anywhere else mm. see like and 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 here's the issue He's too good, like, people know he's too good when he's actually trying. Okay? Mm -hmm. So to get him in a trade is going to cost a chunk of money. Yeah. And his contract. Yeah. Mm. I, yeah. I don't know, who, like, who in their right mind would, at, uh, af after, you know, the everything that's, that's going wrong with, with Deshaun Watson would go after him at, the, at this like, point. Like even if even if there was no off the field stuff, like let's just say that he is he has been a boy scout out there. Like he's he has quit on now two teams. Let's not hmm. forget that. Like right. he quit on the Texans before he demanded his trade and sat out a year while healthy. Like there's there's the other thing. People were like, oh maybe he'll maybe he'll go to the um. Maybe he'll go to the Chiefs, and then the Chiefs go, we don't need wide receiver room. <laughs> we've got we've got Jared Kelso. Kel Kelso? Kelsey. Travis Kelsey. Yeah. yeah, Travis Kelsey throwing laterals, because why the fuck not? Yeah. All right. it, it, it's, just, it's just bad all around, like, and somehow it's perfectly on brand for the Browns. Right. Yep. All right. <clears throat> All right, my winner. It's Kirk Cousins. It, 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 there's no other person I would pick other than Kirk Cousins. Yeah, like the 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 cut the Cousins train is back on the station. It, it took a second for us to get there, but like like last year before he got injured, he was an MVP contender. Like he's starting to climb back into that ranking now. Yeah, forty-two for fifty-eight. 500 yards, four TDs, and only one interception. Yep. The dude's a as, a, as a As a somewhat Saints fan, this infuriates me. Because, <laughs> like, like I, I'm, I'm not a huge Saints fan, but I'll get into the Saints-Falcons rivalry, because, like, that is, 
that is just straight up hatred and i am here for it Mm -hmm. but like so seeing the falcons like with a genuinely great offense right now uh, annoying yeah anyway my loser you know initially i only had one person but fuck it it's the new york jokes it is. It I is. was waiting for that to come up. It oh. is stunning how quickly this has just completely fallen apart for them. Okay, well, okay. Let's first start with the game and the the primary source of ridicule, Aaron Rodgers. That mm-hmm. he looked defeat. Like, what, did Zach Wilson all of a sudden start playing again? Because he was he was just making mistake after mistake. Twenty nine for fifty four yards. T- t- mm-hmm. Sorry, twenty nine twenty nine uh, completions, completions. At over fifty four attempts. Three interceptions, and two of them were costly. One of them yeah. was for a pick six, and the other was thrown again. Like all three of them were thrown at the defenders. Also, and this is the 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 big thing. Sure, he threw 29 incompletions. Sam Donald nearly threw that much altogether, whether it was completions or not. Yeah, I mean, Sam Donald had a, had a worse day. Didn't even throw a touchdown because, the, the, guess what? The Jets' defense is really fucking good. But, uh, but on the other side, again, this was leading to what's been going on. The Jets' offense is, is non-existent. Like, they're... Yeah, you have it, Brees Hall and Braylon Allen, two of the most, uh, two of the most dynamic, dynamic, and honestly wasted potential in a running in a running back a tandem I've ever seen. Because Braylon Allen is honestly I think is really good. Brees Hall, I don't know what I don't know what Hackett's doing by not calling the running plays. Like, it's insane, and for some reason this is Salah's fault. Hmm. Yep, he's got to go. And uh, and Aaron Rodgers is uh, quite upset with the rumors that he was the one who made it happen. Well, then maybe he shouldn't have made it happen. Uh, he 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 protests too much, my good sir. Yeah, like honestly, the offense right now sort of looks like it's being helmed by a forty-year-old guy coming off an Achilles injury. Like it, there's the the even if it is Aaron Rodgers, the the. It's just got nothing going on. It, it, Here's it the looks... thing. It, part of it is they're throwing the ball too much, so people know what's coming. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <sighs> you, but... you, you need a running room, room, especially if you've got someone like Aaron Rodgers who likes to throw the ball. Well, because if you get too repetitive, people will go, oh, it, okay, this is almost certainly going to be a pass play. Yeah, exactly. Get the safeties ready. Yeah, exactly. That's why you have, again, like I said, you have Brees Hall, Braylon Allen, and also, uh, who's the one guy that, who's the other guy? Um, Israel something. Oh. I forgot the guy's name. Uh, Looking it up. uh, Oh, uh, Benaconda. Israel Benaconda. I mean, he he was a, he was a healthy scratch last week. Uh, (laughs) Yeah. But still, you have that you have that run, running room. Utilize it. You have, like again, you're playing the Bills this week. They are, they technically have, they have a good defense. If you exploit their like again exploit their weaknesses, you might actually win. I don't think you are, but still. Ugh, anyway, that's my rant on the on the jokes. Let's move on to week six. So, uh, okay, so. But once again, by week four teams, they are the Chiefs, the Rams, the Dolphins, and the Vikings. So they will not be playing this week. Uh... So what you're saying is the two undefeated teams are are uh, going to stay undefeated. Yes, the two undefeated teams are staying <laughs> undefeated. I can't believe it's the, one of those teams is the Vikings. Boy, that, yeah. that, that was one of my wrongest predictions this season. <laughs> All right, yes, and anyway, let's get started. First up, Thursday night game, San Francisco 49ers taking on the Seattle Seahawks. So the 49ers, oh, oh look, they choked another 10-point lead. Uh, this was, yeah. I was this close to making the 49ers my loser of the week. What the hell is going on with them? I have no idea. We'll ask the, ask the same thing with the Seahawks. Because <laughs> they I mean, lost to the Giants. That's bad, admittedly. 
Did I get that one right last week? I think I got that one right. Yeah, you you picked the Drew Lock revenge game. Ah, uh, even though Drew Lock, I don't think played. I think that that was still uh, Danny Dimes. Uh, mm. Was it? Yep, Danny Dimes. Up still actually had a good game. 20, 23 of thirty four, two fifty two, two tutties, no no picks. Huh. What do you Uncharacteristically know? good. But I got it. <laughs> but yeah, like at least with the Seahawks, the the expectation coming into the season was like they're probably gonna top out as a as a mid level wild card team. Like the 49ers were supposed to have the best offense in the league. They they were supposed to be like the one of the guaranteed in wild cards. Yeah, they, they were supposed they were supposed to lock down the NFC West. Yeah, yes. If, yeah, but if you recall, they're part of the injury bowl. And I, like everybody's injured to hell already. Like I, I kind of don't want to hear it. That, that's fair. Also, I can I quick celebrate because the Mets are are going on to the NLCS. Let's go! It's all about the Mets, baby. Let's go, Mets. O O M G O M G. Uh, anyway, so, uh, this is definitely a get, like, both teams, this is a get-right game. Uh, yeah. it's a matter of who's going to get it right the most. Uh, most people are picking the 49ers to win this. Uh, since it's playing at home in Seattle, I'm gonna go with them for the advantage. I'm taking the Seahawks. Like, I, this, this has to be their get-right game if they want any chance of, like, winning the NFC West, because right now, like, they're, they're only one game behind, and they're behind the Seahawks. Like, if they win this game, they have the tiebreaker over the Seahawks. They're back in position, but, like, they need this win now. I'm going to take yeah. the Niners. I'm going to take the Niners, and, like, if they are wrong, feel free to, like, get me off the, the Niners uh, bandwagon. Okay. <laughs> You've said this a lot this this season. I've been right a few of those times. <sighs> Yeah, back yes, again. but also some of those times you've said, take me off this goddamn ride, and you've not listened. <laughs> I get on many rides. <laughs> like I'm picking, well, I'm some, picking some, the of whom are, some of whom are ill-advised. <laughs> I'm, I'm picking the Seahawks solely because I think they're just the, the better... One, they're not injured to... They're not injured to hell, for one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm and two, I think they are genuine. Like, if they, if the two teams weren't injured in any way, I still think they would beat them. Not by much. <laughs> right. All right. And the <laughs> coin, I uh, flipped this earlier. They are taking the home team. They are taking the Seahawks. Also, home team. It's Seattle. Yep. Very loud. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, true. Blame the designers. Anyway, moving on. Uh, Sunday, it's the uh, the second uh, UK game. Jacksonville Jaguars taking on the Chicago Bears. It is your is hello. your turn. Hello, okay, hello. So, so I need to point something out. I've just done the math real quick. Yep. Mm -hmm. The NFC North is the division of doom. Every yeah. single. Every single team in the division's over 500. It's the only one that can say that. Yes, which is really weird for the NFC North. Yeah. Remember what I Usually one of us is god awful. Remember, remember what I predicted that it's going to be it was going to be the NFC West that's going to be like this. Nope, I was wrong about that. Yeah, yeah. like it's mm -hmm. like that that one only has one team over the 500 and it's the Seahawks does feel really weird to have all of us over 500. Not only are we all, is every team in the NFC North all, all over 500, every team also has a point differential of at least uh, plus 20. Not only are they winning, they're winning by a lot. Also, everyone except for the Packers have a winning record at home. And they're one-on-one. -on -one. Right. Yeah. Also, I just want to point out the Bears have an eight-game home win streak. Ooh. Yes. I did not know that. I don't know how that's possible. <laughs> uh, but anyway. Because we're incredibly lucky. Yeah. So, uh, anyway, I also want to point out I got the Jacksonville game right because, let's face it, the Colts cannot win in Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. mm. Fair. Fair. Okay. You got that one. That being said, is it weird that they're not the home <laughs> team for this? 
Yeah, Jacksonville's usually like the uh, de facto London team. That's yeah, they're, they're the ones who are, are, are always rumored of, they're going to move to London. Yeah. I feel like mm -hmm. that ship has sailed by now, though. But, like, they, they still have, like, fans. For, just for probably being there for so many times, like, they have fans in London now. So it's just like, well, actually, send them to London. I saw a I, I saw an article earlier mm -hmm. about the fact that the uh, NFL Academy is starting to uh, produce good college college players from the UK. Interesting. Cool. And Australia is just doing Australian things and producing good O line and good kickers. I'm fine with this. Nice. Yeah. All right. So. Uh... Let's see. Are we all taking the Bears for this, or is someone, or is anyone going to take? I'm that? taking the Bears because the Jags suck. Yeah, the the Jags have shown me nothing. I know they beat Indy, but like that, like Indy is so hot and cold that like I can't get a good read on them. Like Jacksonville has genuinely been playing like garbage, and like I wouldn't be shocked if they end up getting rid of Doug Peterson very soon. Mm. All right. Mm. Moving on next, uh, speaking of, speaking of the <laughs> NFC North, Cardinals taking on the Packers. So, Cardinals, uh, they overcame uh, a 10-point deficit against the 49ers. Packers held off the very, very injured Rams. Very impressive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Both, team, both teams have got, the, got a win. So, uh, hmm. this is probably going to be an offensive battle. Yeah. Yeah, like... It, it feels like, so, hey, what happened with the Packers last week? I, I, uh, I, I they, gotta... they beat the Rams, but I think the previous week, I got it. Like, like, that was the game where, like, Malik, or not Malik, was where uh, Jordan Love started, like, Garbo, and then came back. Uh, oh, you think of the, the Vikings game? Yeah, like, I What's the face? Love didn't do amazing against the the Rams, but he did enough. Hmm. So, you you yeah. you know you know there's there's not much to talk about as far as news is with these two teams. They've just both nothing's they, really changed between yeah. last week and this week. Yep, yep they're both doing their thing. Yep. Um, shoot, I guess I'll take the cards. All like right. I don't know why I feel like taking in the cardinals but like the, the the packers keep like going up and down and i don't know how to get a read on them so yeah. I'll, I'll i'll take a shot on on the cardinals all right fair I'll take it. they're they're also doing a lot of explosive play calling and i'm wondering if that's gonna catch up with them at some point <laughs> well i think that i don't know because i think the cardinals are in a similar situation to the colts they're also very hot and cold hell they even share, share the same record uh when the offense is clicking that they're, they're on point uh when it's not uh they get i think i'm trying to remember what, the, what was the last game that they lost to uh oh yeah that they did whether when they're not on point they end up losing 42 to 14 which was the game against the Commanders? Uh, yeah, so I'll take. I'll take. Honestly, I think the Packers. I think are a little bit more consistent, so that's why I'm. I'm still ta taking them. Although the coin is taking the Cardinals. <clears throat> mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Hmm. Coin flip. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna take the Packers. All right. I was about to say, what a coincidence! We just flipped a coin for this. <laughs> All righty. Next, uh, like this season, this season it's one where you can kind of just go with the coin, and it's like, like that it did that might be the way to go. Mm -hmm. All right, next AFC South matchup: Colts taking on the Titans. So Titans are coming off of a bye, hopefully more healthy. Colts, th they face the Kryptonite, which was du was which was Duval County. <laughs> Duval. All right, so I'm... is 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 Mason Rudolph still quarterbacking for them, no. or are they going back to Will Levis? Uh, I'm not sure. I haven't. Let me look at the preview. Because honestly, neither of those options particularly excite me. 
Uh, Richard. Hmm. I'm mm. thinking maybe. Okay, well, I'm, I'm just looking at the the injury report. So Pittman's probably going to be out uh, for the Colts. Uh, Richardson's still questionable. Taylor's questionable. Uh, and Josh Downs is questionable. So that's like that's half your offense right there. Uh, Tennessee is mostly on the defensive side because uh, Jadavia Woozy's on IR, Cedric Graves on IR, and then you have uh, Jamal Williams, Jeffrey Simmons, and uh, Keandre Coburn are questionable. And Will Levis is playing, and I'm going to quote an article from from uh, Bleacher Report here. Yep. Will Levis fighting like hell to play versus Colts in Week Six amid shoulder injury. Hmm. This one post have... says, "Latest Will Levis injury update is a potential nightmare for Titans fans." I don't know whether that means he's going to play or not. Which one is the bigger nightmare? <laughs> Him playing injured and then getting more injured. Yeah. Honestly, I don't know if uh, if Will Levis is like. I I feel like Titans fans are ready to be like, you know what? If we lose Will Levis, I'm okay with that. So it's so already all in on the Colts. Yeah, yeah. The the. Yeah. Alrighty. Next. Oh God. <laughs> This is going to be this is going to be a massacre. Texans Patriots, and guess oh, what? Drink it's it, it, it's time. It's gonna be May. Yeah. Oh, the memes are gonna be good with this one. So, remember last week when I said, you know, maybe this game coming up with the where the Patriots are taking on like an absolute shell of a team like maybe that was the time to you know test your rookie quarterback like that would have been smart not against the goddamn texans which by the way has the number has the number uh, the their defense is number one i get for qb pressures yeah like like yep this this is this is the same team that against the bears a few weeks back like got a pressure on literally every single drop back that Caleb Williams had. Like good luck, Drake. You're this you're... this is this is the kind of uh decision that can end like all confidence that a rookie QB has. Like is there someone on the on the uh Texans defense whose name is Kendrick cuz that's how this is going to go. This is this is the Kendrick versus Drake thing, and Drake is going to lose bad. I don't think I don't think there I don't think there is a Kendrick on the Texans, but damn it, that would have that would have been so good. Uh, yeah. So we're all in on Texans. The coin is drunk. They decided, you know what? Maybe Drake May's got something in him. Maybe maybe, maybe the coin knows something that we don't. That's how it's been going this season. Like, right. what's the spread on this? The spread is only Houston minus seven. Well, double it. Double it. No, no, triple I wouldn't it. Say, I wouldn't say double it. I would say increase it to 10. I would. D- d- Houston minus 14 feels like free money. <laughs> Granted, I'm bad at money, but like. That's I was going to say. <laughs> didn't you stop doing why, this stuff? <laughs> there's a reason why I stopped sports betting. But if I didn't. It's not the biggest spread of the week. There, there is at least one that's bigger. Uh, I think yeah, I we'll know get what... that in a couple. Yeah, we'll get to that in a couple of them. All right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, moving on. Eh? Oh, this, this is a good NFC South rivalry. Buccaneers Saints. <laughs> so, uh, the Bucks lost in overtime to the uh, to the Falcons. <coughs> uh, honestly, very close game. Uh, even though you know uh, Baker did not play as well, Saints mm-hmm. uh, got screwed by the refs. Let's face it they they got they got upended. They got chiefsed. Mm-hmm. So 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 I'm giving it to Tampa Bay. 
for one very odd reason, because it usually goes the other way around. Mm -hmm. The hurricane bonus. The hurricane bonus? Where are they playing? Are they playing uh, in Tampa? They're, they're playing in New Orleans. They're playing in New Orleans, yep. They got, they, yes, they're getting away but from what the is Yes, what is currently happening, and what usually happens, happens with New Orleans. This is this is true. Like we we usually do good after hurricanes because we're like like trying to win one for the community. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> at, by the way, uh, as a recording of eight thirty p.m. Eastern, Milton has made landfall in Sarasota County. So if you're still out there, uh, stay at the time of this recording. Stay safe. Uh, seek shelter. Uh, stay out of the and stay out of the path. Either head south or uh, head north towards. Um, Sorry, head south at, towards at this Miami. Point, yeah. At, at this point, don't head anywhere. Just stay. Just yeah. bunker down on as best you can. Right. But, like, if you're still there, fuck. Salute you, my dear Florida man. Just know, don't fire your, uh, don't fire guns into hurricanes. It, it does not work as well as you would think it would. <gasps> no, nope. those, those bullets come back. Yeah. Mm. Uh, in any case, um... So anyway, with this game though, there is a there is another big important thing going on. Derek Carr is out. Yes, huh. we are about to enter the Spencer <laughs> Rattler era, baby. I, I've been watching the baseball and I looked away. The Yankees were in front by two, and now it's tied. Oh, things are happening. Fuck them Yankees. Fuck the Yankees. But yeah, like, uh, yeah, so. Derek Carr is out, and Spencer Rattler is in. How does that make us feel? It doesn't change much. Like, it is going to be interesting to see if the uh, offense can... Because the offense started out really hot. Last couple of games has been... Well, they did eh. lose, like, three in a row. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they, they at least kind of kept it close against the Falcons. But, like against the eagles and the well they also technically kept it close against the eagles but like that game was unwatchable but keeping it close doesn't mean it's going to be a good game to watch right. yeah so it's interesting the spread is still only uh tampa bay minus three and a half that sounds about right i'll take i'll take that uh bu uh buccaneers uh within three and a half yeah and the coin i will say so far through six games, uh, you two have picked the same teams. Uh, we'll probably we'll probably change that later on. Um, <laughs> but anyway, moving on. Uh, the as the coin has selected the Saints to win. Next, we're we're not we're picking the same thing again. I think. Oh God, Browns Eagles. <laughs> Browns Eagles. Now, I think we're all picking the Eagles, but I do want to point out that this game actually has some history. Oh. Yes. So. Okay, so let's go back to the year 1950. Yeah, the, so uh, the Cleveland the Cleveland Browns were selected to uh, come in from the all American I think the All American Football uh, Football Conference, correct? Uh, to play uh, against the Eagles, uh, it, essentially to for the NF for the NFL championship. Now, back then, uh, the owner of the N the owner of the NFL. Uh, marketed this as, oh, this is going to be an absolute blowout uh, on the Eagles portion. Mm -hmm. Exact fucking opposite. <laughs> the, yep. The, the the Browns had a, had a guy by the name of Otto Graham. Yep. Who might have been who might have been the best quarterback in the pre Super Bowl era. Yeah. Also, uh, their coach was Paul Brown, one of like the greatest head coaches of all time. <laughs> you know, the guy that they named the fucking team after. <laughs> And also to this day, I think it is actually the highest selling game in Philadelphia. It, ha oh, it has wow. not been beat. <laughs> that is that is funny. But like, yeah, like I, I, I've, I've done a little bit of research on like Otto Graham's career. Like shit's genuinely incredible. Like the uh, the All-American Football Conference was only a thing for four years. And the Browns won the championship every single fucking year. <laughs> Like there was once a time where the Browns were like the greatest team in the world. A anyway, that that era is gone. <laughs> yes, clearly. 
<laughs> yeah, we're we're all on the Eagles. The coin is selected the Browns. Let's move on. Like, like we should not be this like trusting of the Eagles. They have shown us nothing that uh tells us. Yeah, but it's the Browns, so let's move on. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay, next, last one o'clock, uh what last one o'clock game, Commanders oh, Battle of DC, Commanders taken on the Ravens. Mm. That Battle I, of Maryland. I, I am on the Jaden Daniels bandwagon. Granted, I was before since he went to LSU. Mm-hmm. So I was already uh I was already up there. Like like I I'm I'm there. I'm on the bandwagon. Give me the commies. Okay, well, the coin selected uh, is agreeing with you. All right. Andrew. Uh, that being said, I think I think I think the Ravens are back. Like I, I don't. You don't. I don't. I'm picking the commies. Hey, we finally differed for the first Yay. time. <laughs> it's a Christmas miracle. I will say, having to go to overtime against a team like Cincinnati, who are decidedly not back, like, not impressive. That was not an impressive, well, like, it was an exciting win, but, like, it shouldn't have needed to go to overtime. It's the Bengals. All right, fair. But I, I still think the Ravens are going to cl- uh, cl- uh, clock Jaden Daniels. All right, let's move on. Four o'clock games, AFC West matchup. Chargers taking on the Broncos. Chargers coming off of a bye. Goddamn, the Broncos defense is good. Broncos yeah. defense is a lot better than I gave them credit for a few weeks ago. But like, honestly, is Bo, it, Nix, it, it, is Bo Nix good? Bo Nix is fine. It's just Patrick Sertan and the rest are just carrying the carrying the team to victory. Yeah, like they they got a they got an interception out of a white corner. <laughs> Sound the alarms. They also got a pit, they also got a hundred what hundred one yard pick 101. six from Sertan. Yep. One hundred one so, yard pick six from Pat Sertan, uh, Pat Sertan, and uh, an interception from Riley Moss. Like they're they're already trying to figure out the nickname duo or for the two of them because you got PS two on one side. So what console fits on the other side? I'm th- like the best one I've heard is the Dreamcast. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. Anyway, you were saying, Leah. So the Broncos are undefeated since week two. Yeah, that's weird. Like <laughs> they lost, they lost two games in a row, and then they started winning, and they <laughs> haven't stopped. Yeah, they're the and anti. They're the anti Saints. <laughs> and I don't think they're going to stop. Yeah, the defense has given up like eleven points per game. Actually, hang on, I could do better than that. Like, uh, thirty-four plus thirteen, forty. Okay, so yeah, in the last four games, that defense has given up like eleven points a game. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's fucking good. Like, that's the kind of thing where you can have a rookie quarterback and just kind of figure things out. Yes. Yep. And like they kind of did figure things out against the Raiders cuz like like Bo was good. Yep, exactly. And uh <laughs> so it was weird cuz most people like eh, 50 it's 55-45 on the ESPN Pick'em right now for the Chargers and Broncos. I think it's going to sway it a little bit, but yeah, so I think we're all in on the Broncos including the coin. Mm. Like Yeah, the, the Now granted, the Chargers are coming off a bye. Yeah. So but I've also, the the buy is inconsistent on how if it, it helps or hurts teams. Right. Well, but I mean, like before the buy they were they lost two in a row to the Steelers and the Chiefs, so like right. maybe a get right game. Yeah. Like well, I I do know that before the uh buy uh Justin Herbert was kind of banged up, so Yeah, so current current uh injury report looking at it right now, um looks like most of their team is questionable uh Mm -hmm. uh, herbert and joe alt like i said when last time uh Mm -hmm. saying that they when when he got hurt um so that they're uh, questionable meanwhile on the other side uh let's see uh i think it's just j uh the only two 
notable ones are Josh Reynolds and uh, uh well jo- Josh Reynolds, Luke Wattenberg, their center, and uh, and Jonathan Franklin Myers are all questionable, but we'll see if that improves coming uh, mm-hmm. going forward. Uh, okay, so uh, so are we all in on the Broncos? Yeah, like I don't know how to feel about the 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 Chargers, like. The, the last couple of weeks that we did see of them, it just did not look too impressive. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the Broncos. Maybe maybe I've been watching too much Brandon Perna, but who knows? Well, he did. Well, he did curse his own team. So yeah. <laughs> anyway, next. Uh, oh, another classic rivalry: Steelers taking on the Raiders. Uh, although these two, although I don't know, it feels like the Steelers are kind of mid now, and the Raiders are collapsing. That's the thing. Hmm. I'm still I'm picking the Steelers because the Raiders are uh It's almost as if when all the teams left Oakland, all of them were cursed. Mm. <laughs> well, <laughs> well The A's were holding back the curse. Probably. But be but Uh they they did announce Aiden O'Connell is starting for the Raiders this week. Yep. Which kind of does and... it, that feels like a lateral move at best. Yeah, like like I said, cool, and that helps how exactly. I don't know because Devontae doesn't want to play on the team. They have no running back. The only one, the only person that really is sh- is showing up is Brock Bowers. Yeah, ba- Brock Bowers like might break the rookie tight end receiving record. Wait, no, wait, he's not. Is he a rookie this year? Yes, Brock Bowers, uh, he was the number one tight end. Okay, cool. Like, like I I couldn't remember if it was, if, if, like, I don't know. It's the kind of thing where, like, you're just not expecting rookies to, like, do anything at tight end because it takes, there's, like, a learning curve there. Right. But, like, Bowers mm. is just fucking crushing. Yeah, exactly. Uh, by the way, I should also point out, uh, college actually has a couple of rivalries as well because, this week is the Red River Red River rivalry between Texas and Oklahoma, and they're both playing in the SEC. That was about the first time ever in the SEC, and Texas is the number one team in the country. Yeah, <laughs> because because yep, Alabama and... lost to Vandy. That was art. That was beautiful. <laughs> anyway, all right. Next, okay, next uh, battle of the Thanksgiving teams: <laughs> Lions taking on the Cowboys. Um. Man, I don't it, know. The Cowboys are the Cowboys. There is no better way to put that. That is true. I don't know what that means, and I don't think I ever will, really, fr- quite frankly. Oh, uh, but oh, by the way, did we uh, all pick the Steelers for the for this game? I don't remember. Like, <laughs> did you pick the Steelers? I don't. I, I think we got. I think, I think so, you two got just wrapped because, up in rivalry games. Oh, I think. I, I think I just. I was more interested in talking about Aiden O'Connell, like starting for them, and if that meant a goddamn thing. <laughs> Whoops. Whoops. Okay, but yeah. The well, anyway, coin taking the Raiders. But oh, I think, fuck. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, Steelers. All right. Sure. Steelers got Super Bowl. Blah, 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 whatever. Okay, um, back, okay. Back to the Thanksgiving teams. Lions, Lions and Cowboys. Like I'm picking the Lions. I don't trust the Cowboys as far as I can throw their heaviest player. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Like it, it's, it, it's, it's just a matter of trust. Like they, they keep shitting themselves when they actually need to do something. So they're only beating teams that you expect them to beat. Right. Like they, let's see here. They've they've beaten, they beaten the Browns. Yep. They beat the Giants, and they barely beat the Steelers, which I guess um, is an impressive win. One impressive win amongst two god awful teams. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, give me the Lions. Yep. All right. Okay. Final four o'clock game. Uh, AFC, NFC South matchup: Falcons, Panthers. Is this the biggest spread? I forgot to no. ask. No, no, it, it was the uh, the Eagles. 
over the Browns. That was nine and a half. Wow. Yeah. Like I, I was trying to say before, like I, the Eagles have done nothing to deserve that. It's just the fact that the Browns are dog ass. Also, okay. like this is something I missed earlier. Like the Ravens against the Commanders are a touchdown favorite. Why? Okay, okay hear me out. Falcons are gonna Falcon. Uh huh. I'm picking the Panthers. I see. And I think what? the Falcons are going to trip over themselves, especially against Panthers' new team. Uh, the Panthers got fucking like brought back down to earth last week by the Bears. Mm-hmm. And yeah, but it's also the Falcons, and I don't trust the. I I never have trust in them because they can do really stupid shit. Yeah, I will say though, aside from their offense, one one strength that they have is that they have a really they have some really good guys in the secondary. So, I I I'm sure the Falcons will Falcon eventually, but this is not where it's going to happen. All right. Yeah. Point is taking the Panthers. Yeah. Yes. Okay, I'll take the Falcons as well. Okay, now I'll move on to Sunday night game. I think this honestly should have been a Thursday night game. Bengals Giants. <laughs> Someone at the start of the season thought to themselves, "Yeah, yeah, this deserves to play without anything else to turn to." Yeah, this is <laughs> honestly. I'm picking the Bengals, but I think it'll be a draw. <laughs> no, you can't pick, you, you can't select uh neither team neither team winning. No. <laughs> I mean the the like the, the the Giants are like slightly better than we gave them credit for. They they have the op they have the uh ability to like show up and not be the worst team in the league, which is a step up for them. Uh-huh. Like, they weren't even the first New York, New Jersey team that, that fired their head coach, so... Which, I should get a half point for that. I'll allow it. But, so the, the, the Giants are a little better than we gave them credit for. I still think that the Bengals, if they can get their shit together, are so much better. Like, I'm taking the Bengals, and I don't... But if they lose this game, like, it's Jover for them. Mm. All right. Although I think you said that, like, last time. But anyway, uh, we're all in on the and, and I think they And I think they won that game. So it was not Jover yet. But it is, like, them winning this game will not make it any less Jover. Okay. All right. So we're on the, in the Bengals. The coin is selected the Giants. And finally, Monday night game, a battle for the AFC East lead, Bills Jets. Well, well, these teams has to lose. <laughs> yeah, the the Bills like the Bills get to go up against the New York Drama Squad. Like, is there any is there any indication that firing Robert Sala and handing the keys over to, thankfully not Nathaniel Hackett, that would have been genuinely like. That, that would have been the kind of thing where the NFL would need to investigate them for, like, intentionally tanking. Mm -hmm. Which is a generally bad idea when you have a 40-year-old quarterback. But, like, good God. The spread on this is only two and a half. That feels about ten points too low. The, this Jets team is in the in the drink. True, but that, no. that being said... Well, that being said... Okay, actually, I'll let you go, and then uh, I'll, I'll, I'll follow up. I was just going to say, though, to lean into the drama even more, them winning would be hilarious. It would. And honestly, after, like, looking at last week, uh, the Bills going up against the against the Texans, who absolutely steamrolled them and uh, on, on offense. I think they held uh, uh, Josh Allen to only nine completions. Mm hmm. Uh, and yet they they looked lost without Khalil Shakir in the lineup. 
Yeah. Uh, so, just gonna quick check the uh, injury report. He's questionable. So maybe it, like if he's ready to go, then we'll see. But uh, also, like the Jets have been also missing um, both Morgan Moses and uh, and Morgan Moses, C.J. Mosley, and Michael Carter. Uh, on their side, because without the, without them, like their uh, pass stop, their their rush defense has been ass. Mm-hmm. Uh, damn! Like you know, like if if the Bills end up losing to the Jets, uh, just a- after losing after firing Salah, I don't know. I think we should start looking at once again at at Joe Brady again. But I don't know. Maybe it's just a. Maybe just a just a coincidence, but I'm taking the Bills. Uh, they they need to they should beat the Jets here. If not, there's a problem. Yeah, they should beat them by a lot, but we'll see. Yep. All right, and I believe the coin has finally selected tails, so we're all in on the Bills. Lovely. Yeah. Now, it didn't really differ a lot. The uh, only only a couple times where I think I was I was only alone once. <laughs> I'm I'm over here sitting on my panther. <laughs> well, no, look, you got the coin; they're still there. Yeah, but I'm meaning I'm meaning between us. All right, fair enough. 